In the words of Wade Barrett, I'm afraid we've got some bad news for Impact Wrestling. But good news for everybody else, because Josh Alexander has been ruled out of action immediately. And he has vacated the Impact World Championship. Welcome back, guys, to Fog Wrestling. And Josh Alexander is no longer the Impact World Champion. He broke the record for the longest Impact World Championship title reign. And now, I guess he's broken multiple bones in his body. He will not be competing at Rebellion. He will not be competing in the foreseeable future. And he has had to vacant the Impact World Championship. This is a disaster, in my opinion. I mean, this guy had the longest title reign, and to lose it like this, just having to be put on the shelf and, and give up the belt, the belt is now going to be contested between some guy called Macklin and Kushida. Former WWE wrestler Kushida. If you can tell me who he was in WWE, then... I'll give you a bonus point, I guess. I have no idea. But yeah, that is going to be the Impact World Championship match at the pay-per-view for a company that's got Bully Ray and Tommy Dreamer. They're going with Macklin and Kushida for the belt. What? I, I, let's be real, right? Why Why can't Bully Ray and Tommy Dreamer win it? No, for me, Bully... Bull, remember, Bully Ray fought this guy at Bound for Glory. And lost. Aye, Bully Ray should be the champ. It, it makes zero fucking sense. Billy Ray should have beat this. People are saying Josh Alexander. No, Josh Alexander is an absolute fucking boring bastard, right? Oh, the, the only thing this guy's got going for him is he's kind of got Kurt Angle's look for 2002 when Kurt Angle wore the headgear because he had the wig on and he had the singlet. This guy's got that sort of look going for me. He wears like the headgear, like the Rick Steiner Kurt Angle, and, and he has a singlet. And, but apart from that, there is nothing good about this guy. Not a fucking good mic work in his body, man. Not, I've not seen a good promo. His matches are crap. People will say he's a good wrestler, but that's the problem with wrestling. Everybody can wrestle to a, a decent a good, standard. Everybody's a good worker. The fact that this guy's been... The, first of all, he, he didn't deserve to be world champ, right? He should never have been anywhere near the world championship. So I, I don't know who he beat to get the belt. I think it might have been Sammy Callahan or was it Moose? Might have been Moose. It was Moose, actually. It was Moose. I mean, look, you look at Moose, big black guy, much more... Uh, physical, physically appealing than, than this dude, but yeah, no, for, for him to be champ is a disgrace. But for him to be the longest reigning champ, he overtakes the likes of Robert Roode, he overtakes AJ Styles, Sting, Kurt Angle, uh, Jeff Hardy. I mean, you think of all the greats that held the AEW World Championship. There was actually they were showing you like a, a league, a leaderboard of you know all the AEW champions, and no one really had a long reign, I think. I think the longest reign was like 280 days, which obviously Josh Alexander has now surpassed. I believe he is at almost, a, I think he was at nearly a year That's or maybe over a year. So, um, yeah, just uh, I think it's crazy, in my opinion, how this guy was the champ for that long. And it's not even like, you know, they're going to get the benefit of putting somebody over him. He's not even going to get to draw. This would be like Roman Reigns having a three-year title reign. And having to vacate the belt, how shite would that Cause be? Because he gets to pick up a job or injury. And then whoever's the new champs, you're just going to think, ah, well, they couldn't beat the guy that was. Like, can you imagine if. Reigns... Yeah, well, at least it's not the interim world champion. I know, but can you imagine if Reigns has to vacate, vacate and you get like Rhodes versus Rollins at WrestleMania and Rhodes wins? How can you take him serious as a champ? I know you can't. You, you couldn't beat Reigns, but you could beat the guy you already beat three times to win the belt. It's an absolute mess, man. He should have lost to Bully Ray, but he didn't. The good news is, though, right? No, nobody really cares. Nobody watches Impact Wrestling. We certainly don't, so it doesn't I affect... I certainly won't. Um, it doesn't affect us. Now, we do plan on watching some classic TNA, and we'll upload the retro stuff, the good stuff, to the channel. But, uh, yeah, no, in, in terms of current Impact Wrestling, I, I tried watching it, man. It's fucking horrendous. It is. No, I, I mean, it's, it just seems like... Any time I see a clip, it's it's all women. And also, Mickey James is injured. Yeah, she had to vacate the belt as well. Holy fucking shit show, man. So, again, um, just not very good. Uh, and it's sad. Every time, I used to think how good the TNA roster was back in the day. I mean, it, there, was a, there was a couple of years where they actually, you could argue, they had a better roster than WWE. And you just can't argue that anymore. No, not, not a hope in I hell. mean, the roster's fucking horrendous. I mean, they don't even have a better roster than NXT. No chance, no. Um, so, uh, guys, there you go. That's it. 
Impact Wrestling don't have a world champion. <laughs> they don't have a women's world champion either. <laughs> they've got absolutely nothing. They've got no ratings. They've got no fans. They've got no hope in hell. And it's just a matter of time before they die. I know people have been saying they're going to go away, but I mean, sooner or later, this company will die. So well, it's just a matter of time. Who knows? I'm surprised Tony Khan hasn't bought them yet. T to be honest, I'm I'm, I'm surprised too because he could buy their entire network. Like, why would you buy ROH and not Impact? I know, like, because he's got buckets of money. But know what it is? He just he just knows that the marks are more interested in ROH than TNA. Uh, Despite oh. the fact. Like, see see him, see if he actually announced in AEW that he's bought TNA. How much more over would that have felt than ROH? I know. At least you would actually maybe have a fuck. Oh, this ain't shit. No, this ain't shit. Because why the fuck would Dara ever buy ROH? But think, think of all the things he could show on AEW television if he had the rights to TNA. Exactly. I think everyone that's been on TNA, he could, he could, he could then promote them on AEW. I know. He, he, see, see, you're a world. You, you've actually like no, but he could do like oh. uh, best. Uh, he could do like best of this, and, and then he would actually be able to show Hogan on it. I know the f AW fans don't want that, but he could show Hogan. Could show like Kurt Angle. I mean, think think of any time if Sting has a match, he I can know. he can take all these clips for any stuff that Sting's done in um, TNA. Exactly, but he's but no, he, he, he signs. He, he gets Ring of Honor. Why? Who who was in Ring of Fucking Honor or Samoa Joe? <laughs> Honestly, garbage, man. To me, it was a no-brainer. You, you sign, you buy TNA, and you've got the TNA library, and no matter what people say, that TNA library, just for the stuff, the roster that they had alone, is worth it. But no, they don't get it, so that is what it is. Anyway, guys, that's it. Catch you in the next one. Josh Alexander's injured, and uh, we couldn't care less. So, aye, that's it. Till next time. Peace.